covered myelin and neurons. We're going to talk about what happens when the myelin breaks down. There's a couple of disorders we're going to talk about. Multiple sclerosis, Guillain-Barre syndrome, osmotic demyelination syndrome, progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy, and charcoal Marie tooth disease. So first up is multiple sclerosis. This is an autoimmune inflammation and demyelination of the central nervous system. So it hits the brain and the spinal cord. So symptoms can pretty much be anything because um, it's going to hit anywhere in the brain or the spinal cord. And the key here is that these are waxing and waning symptoms. Uh, the one that you do want to remember is that often you'll see optic neuritis. Basically, they have difficulty moving their eyes. They have eye pain. Um, and then the other key thing is you're going to see it in a young Caucasian woman, 20s and 30s. So this is super key, okay? It's a waxing and waning. So they're going to have maybe some some arm weakness six months later ago. It's going to go away. It's going to wane, but they're going to get new symptoms. They're going to have eye problems again, and it's going to go away, and then you're going to have something else. So that's multiple sclerosis for you. The symptoms are worsened with heat. Remember that myelin helps your axons conduct. You're going to lose myelination. You have poor conduction heat also um, make conduction worse so you're gonna it's like a double whammy so you're gonna worsen your symptoms in heat on diagnosis you're gonna see on if you take some CSF you're gonna see oligoclonal bands that just reflects the autoimmune um, at nature of this oligoclonal bands are um, basically antibodies so it reflects the autoimmune nature there's also increased IgG and myelin basic proteins on MRI you're gonna see periventricular plaques that means around the ventricles there's plaques which will be circled here. Um, again, it's demyelination, so you're going to get a little plaques and it's going to be all over the place. And then the other key he, here is that you're going to get lesions. It's going to be different parts of the CNS and at different times. So you image it one year ago, it's going to be uh, maybe in the spinal cord. You image it one year later. Today, it's going to be gone from the spinal cord, but it's going to be a new place. It's going to be in the brain in the periventricular area. So this is called a lesions disseminated in space and time treatment here this is an autoimmune disease so guess what you do you give them steroids the best anti-inflammatory medication um, this is for acute flares for to prevention and to slow progression you're going to give them something called interferon b and other immunomodulators okay next one is called guillain Bray syndrome there's a super long name here acute inflammatory demyelinating polyradiculopathy it's a super long name but pay attention to it this is AIDP, and this tells you so much about the disease. It's acute, happens pretty quickly. It's an inflammatory disease related to demyelination, and it's polyradiculopathy, so it affects multiple parts of the body. Um, so we already explained that, and it's associated with recent fever or infection, and most commonly it's going to be Campo Pilar. You're going to get asked this a lot, okay? This is a febrile infection. And what happens is you get these antigens from the bacteria. The body's going to make some antibodies against those an the bacteria, but your myelin is going to look similar to the bacteria for some reason. So your body's antibodies, see antibodies. So you got bacteria here, and you got myelin. So it's made, the body makes antibodies for the bacteria, but for some reason they cross-react. Myelin looks similar. It's going to hit myelin too. You can get demyelination. So you're going to get Guillain-Barre syndrome. The key here is that this is a symmetric ascending muscle weakness and areflexia. So that there are no deep tendon reflexes and there's muscle weakness. And it's on both sides of your body and it's ascending from the legs up. Okay. Do you remember what disease has a symmetric but descending muscle weakness and areflexia? The answer is botulinism, clostridium botulinism. You're gonna ask, you're gonna get asked this so much. You're gonna have to make sure that you can keep this straight. Guillain-Barre is ascending; it goes up. Botulinism goes down. Okay, and then the other thing to worry about is you're gonna worry about respiratory failure um, due to weakness of respiratory muscles. This is key. This is what can kill patients. So that's what you have to worry about with this disease, because it can stop breathing because of the lung, the diaphragm, the lung muscles don't work. You can also have some mild sensory deficits. We don't really care about that. For diagnosis, it's based on the clinical picture of symptoms. You can get CSF, uh, cerebral spinal fluid, with increased protein but normal white blood cells. This is a term called albumin albuminocytologic dissociation. 
Um, it's just a term you got to know. The reason is this is inflammatory, but it's not infectious. So inflammation leads to um, basically increased permeability. Protein can get into your CSF, but there's no, there's no infection, so there's no increased white blood cells. The other thing here is that you're going to see um, on histology, there's going to be segmental demyelination, and there's going to be endoneural inflammatory infiltrate. I've just included this picture just so that for reference for you to know what the endoneurium, endoneurium is. The whole spinal nerve, endoneurium is a uh, small part of it. Okay, um, these key terms I've highlighted here, segmental demyelination and endoneural inflammatory infiltrate. You might just see it on a test question, so you gotta kinda keep it to memory. Treatment here, I've, I've emphasized the respiratory support. Um, and then for treatment, you can uh, give plasma phoresis so you have all these antibodies against your um, your myelin and the bacteria. So you, plasma phoresis is filtering out your, your blood, your plasma, takes out all these antibodies. The other thing to do is you give them IVIG. IVIG, um, so you give them a ton of IVIG here, IVIG. So your antibodies are going to bind to the IVIG and they're not going to hit the myelin, okay? So IVIG or plasma phoresis. There is no role for steroids here, okay? Um, this is something, I mean, oftentimes you think steroids, steroids, steroids for autoimmune diseases, but not for this one. This one you give plasma phoresis or IVIG. The next one here is called osmotic demyelination, demyelination syndrome. What it is, it's a, max, it's a massive demyelination of the pons, and it's due to rapid osmotic changes. So again, the name tells you everything. Um, most commonly, the osmotic change is sodium here, and the super useful mnemonic, it's called... Um, uh, if you go from um, low to high, your pawns will die. If you go from high to low, your brain will blow. Brain blow means you get cerebral edema and herniation. Honestly, this mnemonic is good enough. That's all you really need to know. But if you really un want to understand what's going on, if you increase your serum sodium from t high, low to high, okay, so this is our the serum, okay, and this is our brain cells, okay, brain cells. If you have um, super high so, so sodium, 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 right? Super high, water is going to go here, okay? Water is going to go into the serum. And your brain cell is going to shrivel up and they're going to die, okay? If you go the other way, that's why your pawns will die. If you go, go the other way and you decrease your sodium, so you have only like one sodium, okay? So it's super uh, too much hypoosmolar. So you have a lot of water here. You have too much water. Water is going to go into the brain cells and into the interstitium. And you get cerebral edema. Cerebral edema leads to herniation. But honestly, just remember that mnemonic. Low to high, pons dies. High to low, brain will blow. Presentation is acute bilateral paralysis. This is uh, called a locked-in syndrome. Uh, your body can't move even though your, me your mind still works. That's because your pons is dead and all your muscle tracts, which we'll learn about later, goes through the pons. All right, next one is called progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy. Again, the name here is super important. It's progressive. It's multifocal. It hits multiple parts. Um, encephalopathy means dys dysfunction in the brain, okay? It's caused by a reactivation of a latent JC virus infection in AIDS patients. AIDS patients have poor immune system, so this virus gets reactivated and it causes demyelination in the CNS due to uh, destroys oligodendrocytes leading to demyelination in the central nervous system. You already know, I mean, as long as you know that you get olig oligodendrocyte destruction due to infection, you already know that oligodendrocytes myelinate the CNS. So presentation is, again, it's rapidly progressive neurologic symptoms due to demyelination. Finally, the last one is called Charcot-Marie Tooth Disease. This one's a hereditary disease, it's congenital. It's a motor and sensory neuropathy. It's a group of disorders uh, due to defective production of protein involved in the peripheral structure of the myelin sheath. Usually it's autosomal dominant. Again, it's a hereditary motor and sensory neuropathy. That just tells you the symptoms right there. You get weakness, motor weakness, motor problems, and sensory loss. And finally, you get pest cavus, which helps you differentiate. This is just basically a high arch in the, in the foot, this pest cavus, okay? So you get motor, sensory problems, and the pest cavus, that's charcoal-mary tooth disease. All right, that's it for um, demyelinating disorders.